Well, good morning and happy October. And Miss Tasha, this is my favorite month because I my birthday is in October. Maybe that's why. But remember, there's three things you have to know about Miss Tasha before we get started. Okay, what is my favorite color? And look, and I even have a purple bag that has a witch on it. I know. And of course, my water. And then, of course, what do I love to eat? I love chocolate. And you will understand that later if you have never been with Miss Tasha uh, in one of the stories I read. And then, of course, the third thing is my voice, which at times I will scare you, especially since this is October and there's some scary stories. And today my themes are pumpkins and, believe it or not, jack-o'-lanterns. And I'm not going to show you that yet, but ravens and maybe even a few monsters, okay? All right, first book. Are you ready? This is for the little kids. I want you to see if you can do it and do what it says, okay? This is Spookly Counts to Ten. It's by Joe Troiano, illustrated by Nan Brooks. Copyright 2003. The publishers is Barnes & Noble Publishing. All right, here we go. All right, how many pumpkins? One. And one pumpkin named Spookly is waving hello, so I want everyone to wave hello to Spookly. Okay, number two. Oh, these two pumpkins are having fun there in a row. And look at one of them's pink. I'm going to have to move my little guy here so you can see. One of them's pink. I've never seen a, well, a pink pumpkin. I don't know. <gasps> now, this one is one, two, three. Three little pumpkins, and they're playing peekaboo. So are you ready? I want everybody, hands. Over your head, over your face, on the count of three, and then Miss Tasha's gonna say peekaboo. Ready? One, two, three, peekaboo! Let's do it one more time. One, two, three, peekaboo! Okay, I hope you all were doing that at home. All right, now how many pumpkins? One, two, three, four. Oh my goodness, there's a blue pumpkin with polka dots on it. Kind of different, huh? And there's another pink one, and an orange one, and even a yellow one. There's four friendly pumpkins, and they're smiling. Everybody, big smiles. They're smiling back at you. See their smiles? Okay, good. Oh, look what the five pumpkins are doing. I bet you, you need to do this every day, too, so then you don't get crabby. These five pumpkins are taking a nap, so they're all sleeping. Now there's even a pink one with pink polka dots. So, <gasps> There's a purple pumpkin. Oh my goodness, I love that. Now we are six pumpkins. One, two, three, four, five, six. And you know what these six pumpkins are doing? They're all happy, so they're all clapping. Everybody clap. Clap, 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 clap. Good, all right. Now, what's the next one? Oh, I bet you some of you do this. These, there are seven of these and they're shy. And sometimes when you meet new people or something, you probably hide behind your daddy's pant leg or you hide in your, in your mom's shoulder. So everybody put one hand up and then I want you to just peek out and look and then go back. And again, peek out and go back because you're shy. Now there's eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's the purple one again. They are wacky colors and they don't match. But you know, it's still fun even though they don't match. Okay, now what do we have? Nine, if I can get it open here. Sometimes these don't work for Miss Tasha. There we go. Now, I don't know if any of you, when Miss Tasha was young, way, 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 way long time ago, we actually did this. It was called Pyramid, where you started with four people on the bottom that were really strong, and then you had the next three, and then you had two, and then you had one. And guess who always got to be number one? Because Miss Tasha was so tiny when she was little, I cannot tell you. I always got to be on the top. And then when the, the pyramid all went down, I was always on the top, so it wasn't bad. So they're climbing up high, and here is the number 10. And what are they all doing? You can see them going like this. They're waving goodbye. They're waving goodbye to you. All right, so that was Spookly. Okay, now the next one, I just love. I have lots of, of my Biscuit stories because Biscuit's at such a cute little puppy, and every time I point to you, you have to go woof, woof. Okay, every time I point to you and you're going to go, I hope you're doing it, woof, woof. Biscuit's visit to the pumpkin patch. Oh, wait a minute. 
It's by Alyssa Satin Capicelli, and the pictures are Pat by Pat Shores, and it's in 2004, and da, 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 da. it's Harper Collins. It's Harper Collins as the publisher. We're going to the pumpkin patch, Biscuit. I hope some of you get to go. I think uh, Amador Flower Farm is open now, so that would be fun. Woof, woof. Oh, wait a minute. Woof, woof. Here, sweet puppy, climb in. Oh, he gets to go in the wagon. Oh, 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 wow. We can carve this pumpkin to make a jack-o'-lantern biscuit, and that pumpkin will make a delicious pie. And what does he say? Woof, woof. Oh, biscuit, no digging now. Remember, little puppies like to dig, but there's somebody behind that pumpkin. Look, is that the, yeah, yep. Yeah. Look, Biscuit, we can even paint a pumpkin on the pumpkin, at, at, the, at the pumpkin patch. Oh, look at some of them. You know, you can do that too. Instead of carving, if it's easier for you, just get some, some uh, paint and everything and paint pictures on it. And the next book I'm going to do have some really cute ones where you could paint a, a face on the, on the jack-o'-lantern. How do you like this one, but Biscuit? And he goes, woof, woof. And he's still looking. What is over there? Biscuit, where are you going? Woof, woof. Oh, silly puppy, you found puddles. Oh, and of course, they go woof, woof. And then he even goes bow, wow. Oh, and then look at there's another friend, too. What's this? It's a rabbit. And what does the, how does the rabbit move? Hop, hop. And of course, what does he say? Woof. Even the little bunny is visiting the pumpkin patch. Oh, my. Come along, Biscuit. It's time to go home. We have lots of pumpkins. And what does he say? Woof, woof. And then we have a bow, wow. And we even have a hop, hop. And lots of friends, too. Isn't that a nice one? Okay, off goes this one. And on goes, because I'm going to read about a... A jack-o'-lantern. I know. And this is Pizza Cat, Five Little Pumpkins. And that's why I want you to see, because some of their faces are so funny. Are you ready? All right, here we go. Oh, this is by James Dean. The cover design is by Jean L. Hogle, uh, Harper, uh, in 2015, and it's the Harper Collins Publishers. All right, here we go. Five little pumpkins. One, two, three, four, five. Very funny looking pumpkins. And a fort Pete, Pete the Cat. You've got to also watch the bird. There's a little bird on every page, which is kind of fun, too. Sitting on a gate. The first one said, Oh, my! It's getting late. See, he even has a, a watch. And even the little bird has a watch, you guys. I, I know. So cute. The second one said, you guys, that is a toad that looks like a, a witch, and the bird's following it, and it's on a motorized, <laughs> motorized broomsicle. Here are there are witches in the air. Ooh, and look at he's on the on it too. Oh my gosh! The third one said, "Now this is the one I think. I hope some of you do. They are making a cross-eyed pumpkin, a jack-o'-lantern. I think that is a really cute one. That's one of my favorite ones." The third one said, but we don't care. The fourth one said, ooh, look at, he even has pointy ears. Oh, my gosh. <gasps> but Pete the Cat has red shoes. Sometime I'm going to have to read to you uh, Pete the Cat in the red shoes. It's so fun. And, of course, the bird's on the back. You guys, the bird even has red shoes, tennis shoes. I mean, really? Oh, my gosh. Let's run and run and run. So I don't know how they're running, but supposedly they're running. Okay, and the fifth one said, I'm ready for some fun. What are they going to go do? They're going to go trick-or-treat. Uh-huh, even the bird has a trick-or-treat bag. Whoa, went the wind. Uh-oh, they're all tipping over, guys. Oh, no. And out went the lights. All you see is their faces. Oh, my gosh. And the five 
little pumpkins. See, now they have flashlights on. <laughs> they rolled out of sight on skateboards, really. Isn't that a little bit different? And you know who else has a skateboard? Remember? The little, yeah, he does. Happy Halloween! Okay. All right. You are now all going to have to stand up, and you are going to have to dance. And you are going to do this cute little song, and I'm going to kind of show you how it goes. What you're going to do is you're going to take a step to the left, then you're going to step back, and then you're going to stop with your left foot, and then stop with your right foot, and then you're going to clap your hands, and it's a really cute song. Oh, you have to slide. Sorry, you have to slide and slide. You have to do that, too. Here we go. Oh, and look at what color is the spider purple what can i say miss tasha just has purple on the mind here we go it's halloween and this time we're gonna get spooky 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 to the left to the left take it back now y'all take it back one hop this time one hop right foot two stops left foot two stops slide to the left slide to the left slide to the right slide to the right Free. Here we go. Happy Halloween, 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 Halloween. Okay? You think you can do that? We'll go all the way through one more time, really fast. It doesn't take long. Here we go. It's Halloween. And this time, we're gonna get spooky, 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 spooky. Here we go. To the left. To the left. Take it back now, y'all. Take it back. One hop this time. One hop. Slide to the left. Slide to the right. Slide to the right. Freeze. Freeze. Everybody clap your hands. Take a now, y'all. Okay, now ready? Here we go. Everyone whisper. Happy Halloween. 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 Okay. There you go. That was a cute one. I love that one. All right. Now Miss Tasha has to do a little... <laughs> A little changing here because I am going to become a raven. Miss Tasha is going to become a raven. So this has to go off. And I have to wear a hat that is very fancy. And where is the thing? Here we go. Okay, do you see the bird? Do you see the big bird? And see, Miss. Tasha's raven cloak. See how all the pretty colors they can have in it? I know. Okay, now the next two stories are about ravens. And the ravens, these are books from Alaska. And these are folk tales. So they are stories that have been handed down and handed down uh, generations and generations. And on this one, this one is really neat because you guys... This one is a Caldecott Award winner. And to be a Caldecott Award winner is really something. And there's other fun books that you might want to, to get in addition to this one. There's, about, there's one about a coyote and a rabbit and uh, some kind of parrot and a turtle. Okay, here we go. This is Raven, a trickster tale from the Pacific Northwest. And it's by Gerald McDermott. It's illustrated by him, too. It's Voyager Books Harcourt, incorporated in 1993. And at the end, you are going to have to, we're going to do something where this is going to be your challenge, okay? Here we go. All right. Oh, I think I missed one. It's hard because I have, nope, this is it, okay. Raven came. Look at how beautiful the pictures are. All the world was in darkness. The sky above was in darkness. The waters below were in darkness. Men and women lived in the dark and cold. That's not good. And look how beautiful he is. Raven flew across the valleys and across the mountains. He flew along the rivers and over the lakes. There was darkness all around. 
But do you notice something? I wonder if you saw that. Then he saw a bit of light far away. He flew and flew and came closer to the light. The light was at the edge of the water. Whoa! Look at that. That's kind of like a castle or a big, beautiful hut. And it has totems. And that's what we're going to talk about later. Well, the light came from a house of the Sky Chief. And it was shining Raven perched high in a pine tree on the shore. And Raven watched. There he is. Well, he saw a beautiful young girl emerge from the shining house and go to the edge of the water. She was Sky Chief's daughter. She knelt and drank some water from a woven basket. Now remember, he's a trickster, so he can change himself into other things. So he changed himself into a pine needle. See, I have pine needles on mine. He flew down from the tree and he floated on the water. And when the little girl drank again, she swallowed some of the pine needle. Oh. Well, after a time, the little girl gave birth to a child. And the child was small and dark with shiny black hair and tiny black eyes. What? Who do you think that child was? It's the raven as a, remember he can change. It's the raven as a little baby. Raven had been reborn as a boy child. The sky chief was delighted with his daughter's child. He called him grandchild and he played with the boy and carved toys for him. And he invited the elders to come and see the curious, wondrous child. So there they all are. Look at the little guy. Oh. Well, the elders gathered in the shining box room with the Sky Chief and his daughter. They watched Raven Child crawl around the floor of the lodge. He pretended to be playing all the time. He was trying to find where the light was hidden. Hmm. Then he saw a box in the corner of the lodge. See the pretty colored box? Hmm. The boy was large, or the box was large. It was carved and painted with many colors. The box was bright and it glowed. And the raven child said, Gaga! What do you want? asked his mother. The raven child said, Gaga! And he began to cry. What does the child want? asked the elders. The raven child said, Gaga! And he cried and cried. My grandchild wants the box, said the sky chief. So the young woman placed the box in front of the raven child, but he continued to cry. She took the lid off the box, and inside was a smaller box. Well, she took the lid off of that box, and inside was a smaller box. And when the mother lifted the lid off of that one, the light poured out and flooded the room. Inside the box was a shining ball, blazing with light. What do you think the ball was? It was the sun. Give him the ball, said the sky chief. Oh boy, is he happy. His mother gave Raven Child the ball. Raven Child stopped crying. He began to play with it. He rolled it around the floor of the lodge. Gaga! Then, guess what he did? He changed himself into a bird. Ha ha! He became the raven once again. Ka ka! Sky Chief and his daughter and the elders looked at amazement as the raven plucked up the ball of light in his beak, flew through the smoke hole in the top of the lodge, and disappeared into the night sky. Oh boy. Well, Raven flew over the valley and the mountains, and he flew along the rivers and across the lakes. Then Raven threw the the sun in high into the sky. He threw it all the way and it stayed there. This is how Raven stole the sun and gave it to all of the people. And the nice thing about it is, and why do the people always feed ravens? To thank them, to thank him for giving them light. So they feed him fish. Isn't that a neat one? Now, this is going to be, I think, in the paper, 
And this is your challenge, is that I want you to make totems, and it tells you here what you can do. And then the other thing is, <laughs> remember, what does Miss Tasha love? What do I love? Come on, guys. You know what I love. I love to eat. Come on, come on, come on. What is it? Chocolate! So, I didn't have a lot of time, so I did things that all had, you know, chocolate on them. And, and I opened the first box. And lo and behold, <laughs> here is a puzzles that I'm going to give to my Bunko group. And, of course, it, it's little cupcakes. And, of course, a lot of them are what, what flavor? Chocolate! And then I opened the third one. Now, you got to remember, what does Miss Tasha love? Chocolate. So here's my third little box, and it says, I never met a chocolate I didn't like. And inside, of course, are sugar-free, because Miss Tasha is a diabetic, sugar-free chocolate coffee balls. I know. So there you go. All right, so there's that one. All right, got to take this. Oh, no, I have another one. Oh, gosh, that's right. I have another raven to read. Oh, lordy, yes. Here we go. All right, this one, <laughs> this one's a good one. It's how the raven got his crooked nose. Because a crow has a straight nose, but if you look, a raven has kind of a, a bend to their noses. And this is another Alaskan tale. It's retold, because remember, it goes down generations. Barbara Atwater and Ethan Atwater, and it's illustrated by Mindy Dwyer. And it is... Uh, from 2018, so it's not too old, and it's by the Alaska Northwest Books, and the publisher is um, McGuire Press. Okay, here we go. So this is kind of with a grandmother and a granddaughter. Now, you guys, there's sometimes they have these Alaskan words in here that's kind of hard for Miss Tasha to read, but that's the way we go. Slow down, child, said grandmother. It's better to take your time and do things right. Do you know the story of how the... Chilean, and that's what they call a raven, how the raven got his crooked nose. Granddaughter shook her head. No! Then sit and I will tell you. Suku, that's uh, for a little girl, a little granddaughter. Where once, Chulin had a very straight nose. He thought he was quite handsome and he was able to do many things with his straight nose. And here is some um, oysters, and he tried to break them open. But Julian was a trickster, and sometimes he did things that were not wise. Sometimes he got him into trouble, and he did, because guess what happened? <laughs> he broke his beak. He broke it. And things could not have gone, could have gone any worse. Now he suffered from a bad injury. How long have I been sitting here? Because he kept hiding his nose. My nose, my poor nose. Half of his nose is gone, guys. Oh, no. So what did he do? But how did Julian lose his nose? He would never say, my dear, maybe he was too embarrassed, answered the grandmother. Well, Julian noticed that the birch tree that he sat in, and he peeled off a curly piece of bark, and he pushed it over where his nose had been. What he, when he cut through, he thought about it. Julian did know where his nose was. Aha, uh -huh. even though he often acted silly, he had a way of knowing things. He had special powers, just like that other raven. Yes, he knew where his nose was, but how would he get it back? Hmm. Well, the bubbling creek below Julian flowed into a lake, and a small village was nested on the hillside above it. While Julian was thinking... Chida from the village, this is an old woman, she walked over to the beach to gather some driftwood for her fire. As she reached a, a piece of wood, she noticed something. Yada, what is this? Brushing off the sand, she examined his nose. There's his nose. Hmm, this will make a good tool. And so she tucked it into her little purse that she has, and I cannot pronounce that little purse. So uh, she took her nose, took, used the nose in many ways. First, she used it to clean the sides of the bowl of nabagi, which is her favorite dessert. 
Then she used it to scrape her squirrel skins to make them soft and clean, ready for sewing. Then she used it to scale the, uh, the scales off of a salmon before she filleted them. It was a wonderful tool. She used it often, and it was beginning to look a little bit worn. Hmm. Oh, oh, here comes, oh my goodness. Julia knew that Tina had his nose, but he didn't know how, where she kept it. He had to find a way to get inside. So what does he do? Hmm, he, well, he makes these terrible sounds. Correct, correct. How will I do it? Will he rub his feathers? Okay, wait a minute, I have to ruffle my feathers. Hold it, you gotta have me see me ruffle my feathers, see? I can ruffle my feathers. See, I'm ruffling the feathers. And with his special plow powers, he did just that. He became a human. Hmm. Oh my goodness, now what is he doing? What else can he do? Well, you will see, said the grandmother. Next, he found a beach near a village, and he drew pictures in the sand. And one after another, they all came alive. Oh, he even had the eyes open, the fingers moved, the arms lifted, the knees bent. Oh, they murmured to each other. Then all at once they stood upright and Julian called him, follow me. Oh, my word. Look at all these sand people are now coming toward the village. Crack, crack, make lots of noise. Well, it scared everybody in the village, including Childa, and they ran away. So he didn't take any time at all. He looked for near the bowl. Nope, it was not there. Then he looked at the pile of squirrel thing. Nope, it wasn't there. Then he looked at the fish. Nope, wasn't there. Where was it? Uh oh, he better hurry, because he's starting to become back to be a bird. Then he went around her house, and his magic began to run out. The villagers were coming close. They were home. They were coming home. Finally, he looked in her nice little purse, and he found his nose. Just in time, he jammed it back on his face, and he flew away. And of course, don't you like this? Look at all the purple pictures. I mean, I can't tell you. He was so happy to have his nose back. Correct, correct. But the only trouble was when he was in a hurry to put it back on his face, he didn't pay attention. He didn't notice. And he jammed it back on without care. And so that's why he has a crooked nose. So that's why they have crooked noses. So now the little grandmother, the grandmother says to the granddaughter, it's, be, it's always best to take our time and do things right. We may not get a chance to fix our mistakes. Just look at Julian. He still lives with a crooked nose. Die! And that's what happened, and that's what it means. So there you go. And one more time with Miss Tasha's beautiful, whoops, I got, this is so hot, guys. But this is my beautiful cloak. This is my raven's cloak. I love my raven's cloak. Isn't it beautiful? Yes, it is. All right. Now, uh -huh. which one do I wear now? Oh, yes. Okay, here we go. Oh, this one, you guys, is so funny. I love this one. And you know what? You can get one just like this. It only costs a dollar. <laughs> it's at the Dollar Tree. Of course, there's different colors, but what color did Miss Tasha have to have? Purple. I know the only trouble is sometimes I can't see, but that's okay. All right, so here we go. This is Moly Lux and the Three Scares. It's a zombie tale by Lynn Marie. It's illustrated by David Rodriguez Lorenzo. It's uh, from Scholastic Incorporated in 2019. And how many of you know Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Oh, and uh, this one, believe it or not, was given to me by Little Oak last year for my birthday. All right, here we go. In a haunted huge house was room for four, but they, uh, there lived three scares. On uh, one chilly night, Papa sliced fingers. Oh, God. Got to remember they're monsters. Sliced fingers sa sandwiches and brewed a batch of apple bat soup. The recipe for four, just enough for one more. Mama prepared potions in the lab. I wish I had an assistant. And baby swept bats from the bell tower. So much time and so no one to play with. Time for midnight snack, call Papa. And he ladled up the soup, an enormous tub for himself, a middle-sized cauldron for Mama, and an itty-bitty bowl for the baby in a little itty-bitty bowl. Oh! This soup is too hot, it's boiling my boots! 
see his bolts are coming off. Oh, this soup is hot. I'm unraveling, moaned Mama. <laughs> this soup is hot, giving me a fang ache instead of a toothache. It's a fang ache. Let's take plasma for a walk while the soup cools. Okay, so they're going on a walk. Uh-oh. Here is supposed to be little Goldilocks, but this is Moldylocks. It's the name because she's a zombie. She sleepwalked in the moonlight. Wafting sound of soup lured her through the maze of headstones. Her stomach was grumbling when she came upon the haunted house. It smelled like home, something hadn't she had enjoyed in a long, long time. Hello! No answer. The shutters clattered. The porch creaked. Moldy locks peeked then, tiptoed across the floor toward the kitchen. Mmm. <gasps> she sniffed the scent. Mmm. She sipped Papa's soup. Woo! Too hot. She swigged Mama's soup. Woo! Too cold. And then she slurped baby soup just right, and she gulped it all down. Her belly was full, and she wandered into the living room. What does she go to next? Does everyone remember? The chairs. Yes. She strapped into Papa's chair. Woo! Too hard. Because remember, that has electrodes on it. Then she sagged into Mama's chair because of all the, of the mummy stuff, and so she, it was too soft. And then, snap, boom, the chair collapsed. Oh, no. Then she picked herself up and she dusted herself off. Yawn. She searched. Wait a minute. Where is the... Oh, then she stooped into baby's chair just right. And then, oh my gosh, she broke baby's chair. Well, then she yawned and she searched for a resting place. Well, first she tried Papa's bed. Ouch! This is too hard. Well, it's a bunch of concrete. No wonder. Then she squeezed into Mama's bed. Oh my goodness, and she goes, oh, this is too tight. Well, yes, I won't go there. Lastly, she snuggled into baby's bed. Ah, just right. She buried herself under the sheets, and she fell asleep. <laughs> Shortly after the three scarers came home, somebody's been eating my soup, bellowed Papa. Somebody's been eating my soup. Oh, somebody's been eating my soup, uh, Mama shrieked. And somebody's been eating my soup. I didn't leave a drop, said the baby. Then they went into the living room. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, thunder papa. Somebody's been sitting in my chair, mo mama. And somebody's been sitting in my chair, murmured baby. And now it's just a pile of dust. Oh, no. Well, plasma trapped the intruder upstairs and the three scares shuffled behind. Somebody's been lying on my bed, boomed Papa. Well, somebody's been lying in my bed, groaned Mama. And somebody's dead asleep in my bed, screamed Baby. And there she is! Oh my gosh, wouldn't that scare you? How dare you! Eat without us! exclaimed Papa. I always wanted another mouth to feed. You could be my lab assistant, nursed Mama. My, my nightmares have been answered. A playmate baby held out his deadly bear. <laughs> Want to play corpse and robbers? <laughs> sure. Well, Mama hugged her. A little ghoul is the perfect addition to our family, and Mummy knows best said Papa. Oh my gosh, you guys, you can't believe what they're eating. It's totally gross. A smile spread across Moldy Lock's face. From now on, everything was going to be just right, and they lived hauntingly ever after. Okay. All right, now we're going to do, this is where you're going to have to get up and dance, and you're going to have to move, okay? So i got to take this off really fast. And I was trying to think of what to wear for my hat for this one. Well, on every single picture page is a bat and a uh, a bat and a spider. And I thought, no, the bat is what you need to have. You see, Miss Patasha. All right, here we go. And of course, this was from Little Oak too. All right, here we go. 
This book is filled with wicked witches, hairy werewolves, sneaky vampires, and more. Okay, so you have to do whatever this is. Okay, are you ready? If you're spooky and you know what, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're spooky and you know what, clap your hands, clap, clap. If you're spooky and you know what, and you really want to show it, if you're spooky and you know what, clap your hands, clap, clap. Okay, see the, see the bat? That's why I have the bat hat on. Oh, you know what he is? What is he? He's a vampire. If you're sneaky and you know what, nod your head. If you're sneaky and you know what, nod your head. If you're sneaky and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're sneaky and you know it, nod your head. Mm -hmm. Okay, this is a good one. I, and they're going to show later, you, you're going to get to see what shoes Miss Tasha has on. Are you ready? If you're wicked and you know what, stomp your feet. If you're wicked and you know what, stomp your feet. If you're wicked and you know it, and you really want to show it, if you're wicked, you know it, stomp your feet. Here's a mummy. Okay. If you're naughty and you know what, snap your fingers. If you're naughty and you know what, snap your fingers. If you're naughty and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're naughty and you know it, snap your fingers. Miss Tasha has arthritis, and it's hard for her to snap her fingers. Oh my goodness! And look at the background's purple. If you're hairy and you know it, jump up and down. If you're hairy and you know it, jump up and down. If you're hairy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're hairy and you know it, jump up and down. Oh, and of course I have, of course you've noticed that I have to have a, a little pumpkin thing there too, all right? Oh, this is a good one. And I want you to really do this one well. If you're creepy and you know what, honk your nose, honk, honk. If you're creepy and you know what, honk your nose, honk, honk. If you're creepy and you know it, and you really want to show it. If you're creepy and you know what, honk your nose, honk, honk. And this is the fun one. And I hope you have some room, and you can do this with your mom and dad, or maybe your brothers and sisters. If you're frightful and you know what dance around, remember I have to have my thing. If you're frightful and you know what dance around. If you're frightful and you know what, and you really want to show it. If you're frightful and you know what dance around. Okay. Well, that's it for now. But when I come back, you think I look scary now? You have not seen anything yet till you see Miss Tasha when she comes back. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.